Okay, I don't know what was happening here, but I ordered a sandwich. Can you, you can't hear me. No, I can. You ordered okay. a sandwich. Ordered a sandwich that didn't appear to come with a side from Red Robin, just the way DoorDash is set up. So I ordered a side of fries with it. There's fries in with my sandwich. Fair. Yeah. And then there's like this like extra fries because it's Red Robin and they can't fit that many in the box, which <laughs> is what I expected. <laughs> but then there's, there's a side of fries. even more fries. <laughs> so you have all the fries now. But here's the thing. Also, um, having mommy brain, I ordered mac and cheese and forgot about it in that 30 minutes. <laughs> it's surprise mac and cheese. Thank you, fried potato. <laughs> Welcome to the Booze and Spirits Podcast! It's like a drink with death. <laughs> like we rehearsed it. <laughs> I'm Nick McDonald. Sorry, I'm drinking. I'm Kate McDonald. <laughs> and we're not professional. No, this is, I don't know. We probably can't get the award for the least professional podcast. I, I doubt that. We could put in the effort, but I don't know. I mean, I think it's best we edit podcast, and I think that kind of takes us out of that realm. So It does. I do hear some people who don't edit their podcast, and it only sounds slightly more off balance than ours does. So, well, they probably know how to stay on task. Lame. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who these people are, how they have attention spans, but that's not a life I'm over here living. <laughs> I guess this is uh, because we didn't have a lot of foresight. Uh, I mean, we started the podcast with the idea that we'll do this every other week until it's worth our time to do it more than every other week. Until so I can afford to hire a nanny? Yeah, one of those. Um, <laughs> we intended to do it every other week, and we didn't actually look at the schedule ahead of time. And now that we have, we realize that most of our episodes are missing major holidays <laughs> in really peculiar ways. So even though this is the first week of February, this will be our Valentine's Day episode for all intents and purposes. You know what? I work in the restaurant industry. I don't understand how to celebrate holidays on holidays as it is. So this is just par for the course. Well. If you work in the restaurant industry, Valentine's Day is a nightmare. Mother's Day is a nightmare. I think the other ones are fairly feasible. At least they are in my experience. Um, I've had a real shit show Father's Day. I have you. Which was not the restaurant industry norm, but it was festival night. Mm. So there was a Brit Festival show that was a big one. And then, you know, when you work at a place that sells liters sized steins of beer and meat... <laughs> You are a little bit more of a Father's Day destination than some of the other restaurants. So yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I vaguely remember, no, I distinctly remember a guy on the patio at like 7 o'clock on Father's Day screaming at me that he was really disappointed we were at a schnitzel. And I was like, yeah, so am I. I don't, I don't know what you want me to do about it. We've literally bought every piece of pork in town at this point in time and have <laughs> sold that too. So... You can't just magically make that appear out of nowhere? I didn't have a pig to slaughter, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't think he liked my response. Sometimes I'm good with customers, but, you know, <laughs> you come at me like that when I'm already fed up. That's no fucks, Katie. Customers, sometimes you have it coming. <laughs> You're not always right. I'm no. sorry. Uh, boy, we're off topic. It must be a holiday episode. Look how fast off topic we are. Anyway, so... Our Valentine's. That happens with every episode. I feel like we're more off topic. You know what the deal is? Is unlike the last two episodes, we're starting off drinking. So <laughs> I've been drinking for at least two hours at this point. An hour? I don't know. I have I have not been drinking until just now because I didn't know what time we were going to start recording. I figured that could go badly if I uh, started ahead of time. Well, when your mother comes over and needs a drink, I, I said, "Do you need a beer?" And she said, "I'll have one at home." Wait, we don't have any. And then so I started lifting off options. And I was like, I have bubbles, of course. And she's like, you have open bubbles? I was like, no, but I know how to open them. <laughs> That's well, what... you don't need to. Mom, I'm recording the podcast. Okay, well, if you're going to open bubbles, I don't know why when I imitate mom, she's always from the Midwest, even though she's not <laughs> from the Midwest. 
it's an appropriate spanky voice. I, I understand. <laughs> More importantly, that's why the bubbles are in the house, so they can be open and drink. Yes. You're always supposed to keep champagne in the fridge for special occasions. Sometimes a special occasion is you have champagne in the fridge. <laughs> Do we need to put that on a t-shirt with your name and a dash after it, or has that already been used somewhere? I mean, I'm, I stole that quote from someone. Right. I don't know who... But we, we could do Michael it Scott in a it Michael Scott way. Yeah. And I think we might. I could wear that to work. It'd be very <laughs> appropriate. We're a bubble-centric <laughs> restaurant. I'm really debating ordering a shirt that says champagne, breakfast of champions. Really, the only thing that's slowing me down is it's like the unisex cut shirts, which I know are popular, but girls with boobs just aren't designed for those shirts. So Kel has turned away from a t-shirt for the exact same reason before. Yeah. But I'm like, Ugh, that's all I'm going to find at this point in the game. I guess I'm just going to have to start, like, zhuzhing them. We're gonna, oh, we're going to do that now, huh? <laughs> now that you know how to spell it. I mean, I use that word anyway, but. <laughs> that and gin. I'm never sure how to spell gin. Like, we're going to gin this up. I feel like that's when you use the D-J-I-N-N. That's, that's a lie, but it's funnier that way. Don't fuck with gin. I ain't fucking with you. I started singing that to the baby last night. And apparently he's a, I think that's a Big Sean song. He was, he was amazing. Big Sean's East Coast, right? I, or is he Dirty South? I don't know. I, I'm, I know he dated Naya Rivera. Hold on. Consulting the Oracle. Yeah, it wasn't that important. <laughs> well, I need to know All now. Right. Do, 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 do. Is Jeopardy song copyrighted? Can I insert that in over the top here? Sure. <laughs> uh, it, well, he, was born in Santa Monica, California, but his origin on Wikipedia is Detroit. Does that help? No. That's the opposite of helping. That's... <laughs> I don't know what the Detroit rap scene is called. Is it just the Detroit rap scene? Well, I don't know. Eight Mile? Is that what we're calling it? I don't know. No, we're not it's calling it him and that. Eminem. Like, what, what's the rest of the Detroit scene? I'm pretty sure it's, well, isn't that like Motown rap? I don't know. Motown Gangsters? Motown Gangsters Gangsters back again. again. But I do think that we uh, answered our own question here because, and I may be wrong here, but aren't the lyrics Motown Philly back again with a little East Coast slide? Sure. But they're from Philly, not from Motown, aren't they? Isn't Boys to Men from Philly? Well, yeah, but the song's Motown Philly, right? I think we're... Putting too much effort Welcome to, to white people discuss black music. <laughs> We're trying. Special guest Ryan Gosling here to white explain jazz to you. <laughs> oh my goodness! Did we have a topic? I'm sorry. Did we have a topic to get off of? <laughs> Just being terrible people. Okay. With some extra mayonnaise. <laughs> Just shitty people with extra mayonnaise over here. <laughs> Mayonnaise and cream cheese on white bread with the crust cut off. All right, Hampton. <laughs> Have a good summer vacation. She got uh, it. No one else did, though. <laughs> I'm supposed to not be eating gluten, by the way. Okay. Look at my sandwich and my mac and cheese. <laughs> do fries have gluten? Well, they don't, do they? These ones, I don't believe do, but some places, like the seasoned fries, kind of have a batter on them that has gluten on them. So. Oh, gotcha. Standard, no, but sometimes. Those fries are always really good, too. Speaking of fries, it's almost Valentine's Day. <laughs> I don't know. Is that know. what you're doing? I don't know what doing that, for Valentine's Day. I have no idea how that segue comes together. I'm just clawing and scratching to get us anywhere close to being back on track. Your kids get each other potatoes for Christmas, so that fries is for true. Valentine's Day makes sense. Thank you, fried potato. Is that what you're doing for your wife for Valentine's Day? I would recommend chili fries because it's a holiday. <laughs> it's a special day. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. I suppose I probably should. Now my brain's off track. You got my brain off track. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> Going off the rails on a crazy train. <laughs> well, I mean, we started out saying this was going to be about sex ghosts. So it being our Valentine's episode makes sense. Even though we kind of didn't sex ghost it up entirely. No, well, I think sex ghost is more just our pet name for Alice Reem, which was a ghost that... My research had kind of come across, and I became obsessed with, and I actually got the chance last weekend to go to her haunt and check it out itself. Sex ghost. Sex ghost. What you gonna do? So, you know, it's Valentine's Day appropriate. 
so Alice Reed turns out is a lady in red phenomena. phenomena. Yeah, which which is are all ladies in red sex ghosts or or well. I was trying to find a sex ghost story and just kind of ended up researching ladies in red in general. And I think more people are familiar with the lady in white haunting phenomenon. But why can't well, I, heard... I say that without wanting to go phenomena? Um, well, there's, I mean, because there's ladies in white, that's the most common. There's ladies in black, ladies in gray, and ladies in red are all common tropes. Well, so the lady in red is a worldwide phenomenon but it appears that she is more closely affiliated with, like, scorned lovers or, like, women that were kind of wild in their life, prostitutes, things of that nature. Women that don't get the blues. Women that were uh, victims of objectification, as Wikipedia put it. I like that. Hmm. It's a very modern turn of phrase for that. Well, I mean, they didn't really care that they were objectifying women <laughs> with the... You know, Wild West and things of that nature. <laughs> Fun fact. I was watching The Simpsons the other night, and Lisa was trying to find some invention by some 19th century female inventor. She left a clue in, like, a wax cylinder audio log that said, I'm hoping that one day a more liberated woman than I will get permission from her husband to come find my invention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw a thing the other day, like, off-track feminism rant, that was like, Women didn't used to get divorced. Like, this is a modern thing. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, well, women couldn't get their own bank account until, what, like, 1967 or something. Something like that. So... The only, yeah. way, the only way you could own land was to inherit it from a deceased male relative. <laughs> mm -hmm, pretty much. <laughs> and then you probably still had to have, like, a male conservatorship. <laughs> Gotta make sure that uterus don't make her do crazy things. Yeah, but what does it mean when they fixed hysteria with, like, manual masturbation? Like, like doctor, medical masturbation. Like, obviously we're crazy because of men. Because we weren't getting it good enough. So, <laughs> anyway. End tie right. I was trying to figure out how to pursue that line of thought. Cause I think there's something to that. <laughs> yeah, we watched the movie, Hys I think it's called Hysteria, not too long ago. It's like 10 years old, but it's about the doctors that realize that, like, they can make a vibrator to help women get over the hysteria. Because mm. orgasms fix a lot of things. <laughs> See, if men in the 19th century knew how to please their women, women's suffrage might never have been a thing. <laughs> we wouldn't have wanted to vote if you could just get us off in a timely fashion, but no! <laughs> Way to fuck it up, gentlemen. <laughs> this is all on you. We sound real, like, fucked up, <laughs> red-headed, right-wing today. These are jokes, guys. The heads up. These are jokes. They might not be good jokes, but they're jokes. <laughs> they, they, they may not be jokes that <laughs> make you ever want to listen to us again, but here's the jokes. <laughs> so that's why we the started using the hashtag Bad Decisions Club on Instagram recently, and it seems like a good fit. Jazz musician and an insane woman walk into us an asylum in the 1900s. And <laughs> they turn grow up to be us? What's happening? I don't know. Motown Philly. All right. So we're... What? Motown Philly. Oh, your mouth and your words didn't match on the meetup. So it doesn't it matter. It's an audio podcast. It doesn't matter if my face... Yes, my but when I... Don't... like. When your mouth is moving and there's no words coming out, it kind of makes it hard for me to understand what I heard. <laughs> I spend half of this thing looking at my own notes, so I don't even... I don't need your face to do this, is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, you're a better listener than I am. Do you want to hear that? <laughs> <sighs> All don't, right. Don't go into hysterics now. I'll do my best. <laughs> uh, right. A lady in red. So, typically, is a jilted lever, a prostitute, often killed in a fit of passion, or a woman of vanity. That's just, that is, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I'm drinking whiskey, aren't I? Whoops. Yep. Oh, I probably shouldn't drink the hard stuff during the recording. Anyway, the lady in red is a, is a spirit that is often seen wearing red, usually scarlet or a blood red dress. So, you know, we, we're going with the deeper tones of red here. 
She is typically said to be friendly in disposition with a story attached to the place she is. Typically a uh, public place. There's not a lot of private residences that are getting Lady in Red stories. Because you don't bring your prostitute home to kill her, obviously. <laughs> Might make hiding the body easier. These stories do span pretty much worldwide. There's, they're heavy in the United States, at least heavily documented. There are some Ladies in Red in Asia that are well known. I'm not seeing a lot of African ladies in red. I maybe should have looked into that more. And then there's a few in like the UK and Ireland as well that are pretty well known. Well, I think a lot of ghost manifestation is going to be dependent on the culture in which it originates from. So I can understand how that might be a more Western culture thing than uh, some other parts of the world. Well, in red in Western culture typically depicts a, you know, Unchaste woman. Thank you, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Yes. Well, I mean, you're supp- if you're the mistress, you're supposed to wear red to a wedding. But I think if you go to, like, China, you wear red as your wedding dress. I think India might be red, red, red wedding dresses also. Hmm. Well, I knew red had significance in China, but I can't for life me remember what it is off the top of my head. Well, and, like, white wedding dresses honestly only came into vogue, I want to say, in the Edwardian era. Yeah. I might be off on there, but it's like a relatively new concept. Well, and, and, and a lot of Asia, like white would be a funerary color, right? Exactly. At least in the parts of Asia, I'm semi-familiar with their culture. I'm not going to pretend to know like no. Laotian rituals or anything like that. Kate and I are not right. inherently knowledgeable. We research and stuff for this show, but a lot of this stuff we're not going to be able to pick out the back of our brain. <laughs> yeah. We've had kids and years of drinking. There's some some damage there. Soak in my brain in corn alcohol as we speak. <laughs> um, but it does seem that, you know, ladies in red are very, like, are prominent more in, like, Wild West regions. For one, there was probably more prostitutes and more crime. Mining towns, logging towns, those sort of things. So, you know, the kind of areas that Nick and I both live in. <laughs> Our preferred kind of areas, if we're honest. <laughs> They're safer places for us. <laughs> I mean, there are some in the Midwest. There is some on the East Coast. If you follow Spook Eats on Instagram or any of her social media, she spends a lot of time at, I think it's the Ghost House Theater on the West or on the East Coast. And that has a lady. I thought it was Ghost Light. I think it's Ghost Light Theater. That might be it. Hold on. I have a note. Because a Ghost Light is a theater thing. Yeah, I had a note. Here we go. Yes, it is the Ghost Light Theater in Amherst has a lady in red. There's one at Wilkes University in Pennsylvania. There's a few in the South that are well known. There, you know, they do end up at theaters a lot. I guess people were taking their jilted lovers to theaters. This one might be worth looking into in Charleston, South Carolina, near Dock Street Theater, is a lady in red said to be the ghost of Nettie Dickerson, a prostitute who frequented the Planters Hotel. According to legend, she worked as as a clerk in the nearby St. Philip's Episcopal Church while visiting the hotel at night. At the age of 25, she was standing in her dress on the balcony of the hotel during a storm when she was struck by lightning and killed. So, like, she's at church during the day and hooking it up at night, which is probably not as uncommon as we think. And she left this light riding a fucking lightning bolt. How metal is that? Yeah, she's my new hero, possibly. Uh, there's a few in the Midwest. There's definitely a bunch on like the Southwest and the West Coast. The only noted one I found in the Pacific Northwest is Alice Reem. But, you know, that doesn't mean there's not more I didn't stumble across. Because, you know, there was a lot of hookers in Seattle and Bellingham and Aberdeen and Portland and all of these logging All these places you have friends, is what you're saying. (laughs) I don't have friends in Aberdeen. Okay. (laughs) Unless I can count the ghost of Kurt Cobain, or possibly maybe Daniel Bryan wants to pretend he's our friend for this. So, like, you brought up Alice Reen, which is really the focus of uh, this episode. Didn't you like that transition? That was nice. I do it for you. you. we're We're so well planned. We're so well metered and 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 guided in our discussions for real 
So, the centerpiece of the gorgeous Rosario Resort on Orcas Island in uh, Washington State's San Juan chain is Moran Mansion, and is the home to Alice Ream, who may be its most infamous inhabitant, (laughs) though she's been dead for more than 60 years. Alice has been blamed for a litany of unusual occurrences at Moran Mansion. Like most ghosts, she's been responsible for phantom footsteps, turning faucets off and on. Unlike most ghosts, though, many have also claimed to have heard the sounds of flirty and flamboyant Alice in her bedroom late at night, joyfully moaning and creaking those bed springs. She wants to have a good time. Don't we all? So, Morn Mansion was finished construction in 1909. It was built by Robert Moran. Robert arrived in Seattle in 1875 from New York with just a dime in his pocket. He got a job as a ship engineer and eventually worked several expeditions with the father of national parks, John Muir. He founded Moran Brothers Shipbuilders with his brothers, who he brought over with him after he'd made a little bit of money. And it was instrumental during the Yukon Gold Rush in getting folks up to Alaska. And he even served two terms as the mayor of Seattle. In 1904, his doctor diagnosed him as suffering from stress from his many business ventures and and his political dealings and warned him he likely only had a few years left to live. So Robert decided he had to get away, so he bought 7,000 acres on Orcas Island and built up this mansion. I feel like 7,000 acres basically encompasses Orcas Island. But... It's like half of it. It's, it's a huge chunk. <laughs> there he spent his time hunting and fishing and actually relaxed his life down so much that he ended up living till 1943, so almost 40 years <laughs> later after his doctor's diagnosis. Being an admirer of John Muir and Teddy Roosevelt, Moran donated much of his estate to the park system, and most of his property is today is still preserved as Moran State Park. Now, Donald Ream was the magnate industrialist of Ream water heaters and heat pumps, and he was a son of uh, Standard Oil President William Ream. He bought Moran Mansion in the 1930s as a vacation home. He had a young wife. Alice, who was a bit of a feisty party girl with a taste for danger and a habit for going slumming, and she soon found herself sent away from their California home to the remote Puget Sound Island, basically in an attempt for Donald to curb her nighttime activities. Hmm. Yeah. By most accounts, the attempt to isolate her just made her wilder. Fair. Yeah, right? She'd often dress in her bright red dress, jump on her Harley-David motorcycle, and ride into nearby East Sound to drink, dance, and play cards. Harley-Davidson. That's what is... Did I not say Harley-Davidson? No, you said like Harley-Davis. Oh. (laughs) Her Harley Quinn motorcycle. (laughs) She died on May 11th, 1956, from complications from alcoholism, and is buried in her hometown of Oakland, Alameda County, California. So, and I I saw argued online that Alice's liaisons and seclusion were exaggerated and unfounded, which, you know, I wasn't there. I don't know for sure. But I think it's worth noting that while Alice is buried in Alameda County, Donald Ream is buried in Moraga, California, which is an area that he built up and was treated like a local hero long before Alice's death came around. So they got buried separately, which isn't a great sign. Yeah. Today, Moran Mansion is part of the larger Rosario Resort estate. The mansion has been used as a hotel in the past. Currently, it's unavailable for lodging, but they have several outbuildings that you can stay in. The general manager, Christopher Peacock, is quite aware of the publicity the ghost of a character like Alice can bring. So the mansion is often opened up for free exploration, and the building has many displays from the history of its owners particularly Robert Morin. It's funny, on their website, they talk a lot about Alice Ream, but when I got in the mansion, there was very little that we could find about her, and I don't know if that's because they didn't have it as open, since this is... this In these unprecedented times, they only had part of the mansion opened up. They didn't have the whole thing. Yeah, I was like, do they have... Does the mansion just close for lodging because of COVID, or was it... No, it was, it was closed before that. that. The, the second floor is has a museum area where they have several kind of like historical displays and some of the original furniture and they have lots of all the displays there are generally about robert moran 
which, I mean, it's fair. It's named after him. And then the third floor has a library that we weren't allowed access to the third floor. And about half of the second floor is set up for spa activities, which they're not doing at this time because of the shutdown. So one of the neat things, though, is on the second floor, they have a two-story 1913 Aeolian pipe organ. Mm. And uh, it's played from the third floor. And what they will do, I mean, what they were doing when they weren't in shutdown times, and I hopefully they'll get back to it again sometime, is that on weekends they would have showings of the Phantom of the Opera, the original silent one, and they would play the score on the two-story pipe organ. That's fantastic. It really is. I said there wasn't much about Alice in the building that we saw. Kel happened to stop in a ladies' room that was kind of towards the restaurant area of the mansion, which would be more open during other times. She found a collection of old Vogue magazines that belonged to Alice that they had hung on the walls in there. That was really the only sign of her we saw in the building other than they have a cocktail on the menu named after her called the lady in red which we tried it was all right it was a bit strong i don't know if that if it's always that strong or just the bartender made it a little strong because he was slammed and he felt bad for making us wait (laughs) so alice herself she has been spotted in her room and i forgot to check which room was hers before i went in which i kind of regret now She's been seen wandering down the mansion stairs and even in the parking lot, mounting her Harley for another trip into town. You just had to say mount. (laughs) I'm sorry, I don't consider that a blue word, uh, as you do, apparently. (laughs) Mount, mount, mount. Carry on. The clomping of her high heels can be heard in many areas, especially the mansion's upper floors, and her motorcycle can be heard leaving the property late at night. She's often described wearing her vibrant red dress or sometimes a white nightgown and is sometimes seen carrying her small dog. So a lot of the Alice stories come from former employees. One claimed to have the chair she was sitting in pushed in, though there was no one behind her at the time. Another claimed to try to spend the night in Alice's room and saw shadows cross the wall all evening. Shortly after midnight, when she felt some unseen person caress her hand, she left the room and slept elsewhere. (laughs) That's fair. Uh, Another employee attempted the same, but after more touching and the bed shaking, left the resort and the job behind entirely. (laughs) These people, they're chickens. Right? Uh, In 1987, a trio of entertainers stayed the night in the mansion and reported being kept all night by the sound of lovemaking coming from Alice's room. No one was staying in her room that night. (laughs) So, think about researching stories. That's always kind of... I don't know. I I always feel kind of dirty about it, but a lot of the research we do is on websites, ghost hunting websites or or folklore websites. And basically, we're just getting the umpteenth retelling and modification of a story most of the time. My favorite thing about this story is that one of the top search results was a user forum from a travel site where actual visitors had gotten onto this forum and left stories of their firsthand accounts. Well, that's fun. So, a former employee posted on the board, sharing some of the scuttlebutt that makes the employee gossip circle. She was working there over the summers of 05 and 06 and mentioned that the ghost often appears as a woman with long, loose white hair and often in a night white gown. The word among the staff was that Alice killed herself by jumping off the second floor balcony outside the music room, which is a curious inconsistency from the standard story, and basically there's... I know that that's a rumor, but I haven't seen anything to substantiate it. I guess Kel said she found some video on their website with a lot of people who knew Alice, and they said that they they implied that that was absolutely an impossibility. Fair. One visitor was exploring the mansion with her husband one evening in 2006. They'd split up, as is the fashion in any good ghost story, and she found herself alone in a room with some sort of presence. She didn't see or hear anything, but felt very strongly that someone wanted her to leave, so she fled the room, calling for her husband to help. One of the posts was from a man who stayed in the mansion in the mid-90s. Strolling the grounds after midnight, he saw a ghostly woman strolling down the stairs in the lobby and knew immediately that she was a specter. He also managed to spy some ghostly figures by a structure in the parking lot. Despite having registered to stay three nights, he packed up his belongings and checked out of the hotel at 6 a.m. the first morning. One last one here mentioned that while she was staying in the early 90s, she attended a dinner where her young daughter, she claimed to see a woman dressed in red enter the room through a door on an empty wall. Look at the girl. 
look around the room and then disappear back into the wall from where she came. So that's the that's the research that we dug up. Um, so my wife, Kel, and I, we went out there for a night for the weekend. An excuse to get away from the kids. <laughs> Any excuse. Any excuse. And it was nice. It's a really nice place. I would much like to see it when it's not winter and when it's not being choked out by COVID restrictions. That's yeah, fair. We, so you're going back. Is that what you're telling me? Possibly. <laughs> We didn't really come away with too many stories. Kel doesn't believe in ghosts, but she was really hoping we'd run into Alice. She even went out and bought a red dress to kind of cosplay as Alice, though eventually she abandoned that because it was too cold for the short dress she bought. <laughs> Let's see. I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought I heard something that sounded like a motorcycle, but really what I think it was was just a gate of some sort blowing in the wind. So dump, 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 dump. So it kind of, you know, it sounded like it could have been a motorcycle, but I mean, it went all night and Kel heard it. We couldn't really figure out where it was coming from, but it sounded much real world ish. When we went through the museum area on the upper floors, like I said, we couldn't get to the third floor. We wandered around the second floor. I had a video camera and a audio recorder going while we did that we're not ghost hunters we didn't do any real ghost hunting we didn't sit around and ask questions or or anything like that we just kind of explored things my audio quality was pretty crappy because i was using my phone and i wasn't (laughs) i didn't have the presence of mind to remember i had a recorder in my hand so a lot of times the microphone is brushing against my sleeve and it's going and it's just god awful but I did find a couple weird anomalies that were on my audio recording. Okay, tell me more. All right, let's. So this is the first one I had. Which what you'll hear is there's some popping from my bad audio, and then there's a little bit of uh, Kel talking to me, and she says something about about what's up, I believe. And then I tell her that I heard some creaking up there because I heard some creaking up above me on the third floor because the third floor is opened up so that it has so it can look down on the second floor where the pipe organ and the the movie projections are. Yeah. Now, I went back and I checked that audio and the audio where I heard the creaking, there's a little bit of a whisper there and I cleaned it up as best I can. Here's the full thing. And like I said, you'll hear some... uh, some pops, and then you'll hear Kel, and then you'll hear me. Pop. That's creepy as fuck. That's Kel. There's me. I mean it. Sounds like a creepy demon voice on my end. All of it, or? The, like, last, like, second. Oh, that was me. <laughs> so, anyway, during that popping, I, I noticed a whisper. So I cleaned it up as best I could. I took the pop-outs. That almost sounds like a deep breath. Okay. Okay. To me, it kind of sounded like never round. But I guess it could be a deep breath. I don't know. Like I say I don't know that these recordings are anything. I just know that they were interesting because I also um, had a little miniature video camera with me, like in my pocket, and I didn't get that audio on the video camera. But that audio quality is pretty bad, so it's it's not too exciting of a thing. There was another spot where after. I told Kel, you know, I thought I heard some creaking up there. We kind of stopped and sat down and just listened for a while. And um, this one came. And the music in the background, you hear that music. They they were playing that music on loop the whole time. I assume it was a CD. There's more of the music here, but I did pick up what sounded like a weird kind of talking moment in the middle of it. Did you hear that? Yeah. I can't make out much. Like, it just sounds... I can only, like, hear, like, one syllable. Like, a go or a no or... Well, I got... I 
I focused on that. So I, I isolated and cleaned that up as best as I could. Go. No. Oh. Go? I got more of like a no out of it, but... Uh, I got 12 out of it is what I got. I mean, I can kind of see that. Anyway, um, like I said, those could be nothing. That Neither of them showed up on my video recording, and we didn't hear any of them at the time. I don't. I wouldn't qualify them as high-quality... Proof of otherworldly things. I forgot what the phrase is. EVP? Yeah, EVPs. Electronic voice phenomena. Yeah. Phenomena, but phenomena. That's what we got. You know, and I... I heard some creaking upstairs a couple times, which when we were in the museum, we were the only people there. There was nobody on the third floor. There was some people down below in the lobby area, and you can hear them talking on that same piece of audio later, and it's a lot more muffled than that uh, 12 was. So I don't know. I don't know if it's anything. It's what I got. What I got? I remember that. I don't cry when I go into it. Maybe interesting. Maybe totally uninteresting. It's at least interesting. We kind of half-assed our ghost hunting stuff. So. <laughs> it was a side quest. It wasn't our main priority. <laughs> main priority was get away from the children. And we did that by traveling Yay. up to an island where there is absolutely nothing to do in an off-season and a COVID shutdown. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds pretty nice to me. No, because you can't go inside anything. I mean, we could sit in our hotel room was the only place inside we could hang out. We couldn't. You can't go inside oh, a yeah. restaurant or a cafe or a store. I mean, you could go inside stores, but you can't hang out there for long. So it, it, it was it was on an island with a winter storm rolling in. And I'm we like, went, when I'm thinking to myself, like, the Pugin is fucking cold. Like, mm-hmm. We went up to Mount Constitution on Saturday, and it was a good thing we did, because Sunday morning the road was shut down, and it was covered with snow up that high. So <laughs> The minivan would not have made the trek. It might have, but probably would have been a, a harrowing venture. So, as we mentioned, the Rosario Resort does have an Alice Reem cocktail, and I was really hoping they'd let us use their cocktail and save you a bit of work, but I, they never got back to me on that. So, I guess it's it's up to you to create your own Alice Reem cocktail for this episode. Well, they're probably running with a uh, skeleton crew, because oh, yeah. <laughs> if you were in the hospitality industry right now, you were doing way more with fewer people and trying to not go crazy. I'm sure. Um, well, the whiskey I was drinking here was my trial run on the Alice Reem cocktail, but I haven't named it yet. Oh, well, we'll tell us about it and we'll shoot together a name of it. How's that? Okay. So, I mean, typically, and it wasn't necessarily inspired specifically by Alice Reem as opposed to just, like, Lady in Red Phenomena and Phenomena. See, I can't do it. I can't even, can't even say it. But inspired by Ladies in Red, since there is a lot of Wild West logging towns, Gold Rush town sort of thing, I decided to do a whiskey-based cocktail. And um, I don't know why, but I decided that black cherry juice seemed like a flavor I hadn't played with before. Okay. So this actually, I I keep trying to overcomplicate this drink, and it's unnecessary. Like, <laughs> I really like the way I made this, and I'm just going to roll with it. So I used a splash of simple syrup, which is probably not even necessary, but when I start day drinking on a day off, it just seems like a little bit sweeter is a better way to start the, the route. <laughs> Neat whiskey is, is a little rough at two o'clock in the afternoon for me on most days. It's a little more ladylike to put in a, a dash of simple syrup and sweeten it up a little. Yeah. Just, How's that? Just, How's know. that? Because <laughs> I'm a lady, god damn it. A goddamn fucking nice lady. <laughs> so anyway, this is essentially a little a little splash of simple syrup, a shot, a heavy shot of I use Pendleton. Uh, so we're using a Canadian whiskey. I was going to go with bourbon, but you know what? Pendleton was in the house already, and I like Pendleton, and it's got some nice caramely flavors that, that worked well with this. See? Earlier I said caramel. You did, and now you're saying caramel. Yep. I don't know who I am <laughs> or how I'm supposed to say that word. You can get your shit together. Find all your shit. Get together. Put it in a backpack. <laughs> get your shit together. Take it somewhere if you need to. Anyway. 
So we've got some simple syrup. We got like essentially like a, a wedge worth of lemon juice squeezed in here. We've got a shot of Pendleton. We've got a little bit of black cherry juice. And for, then the, we talk for, about, the, for the layman, how much of a lemon is a wedge? Like an eighth? Quarter? A sixth? I mean, probably like a sixth of a lemon. Okay. Like a teaspoon or less worth of juice, probably. I'm sure as a bartender, you have an idea of what a wedge size is, but the but a layperson may not. Anyway, did I say topped with soda water? We topped it with soda water. I don't know. I interrupted you. Lemon wedge, uh, black cherry soda water. Juice. Juice. No, juice. Black, black cherry, cherry juice. juice. And some soda. Okay. Because I like things bubbly. Okay. Because I'm so bubbly, obviously. <laughs> and because it pushes the alcohol in your system faster. <laughs> really, it does. <laughs> so what would we call something? Let's call this, I don't know, the Charles de Berg. Who's Charles de Berg? He's the guy who wrote the song Lady in Red. <laughs> we don't really do that. I think you just offended my dog, who can't even hear you because I'm wearing headphones. Like, he just ran out here like, what the fuck? Who was, what was the name of the other, the lady in red that I like? Nettie. Nettie, Nettie or Nellie? I think it Hold was on. Nettie. Well, I have a friend named Nettie. She'd be excited to have a lady in red drink named after her, too, I bet. Uh, it was Nettie Dickerson. Nettie Dickerson. Yeah. Cherry Dickerson. Um, We could call it Lightning Nettie's. Ooh. Black Cherry Lightning. Again, that sounds like something you buy at the gas station. It does. Out of a paper bag. <laughs> we had this problem last time, I think, too. You picked a name, and it sounded like something that you would... Well, it sounded more like a variation of a White Claw, but... Maybe maybe I just want every drink to sound like a Burt Reynolds movie. Maybe that's just my problem. <laughs> but you know what? I bet if you really wanted to like make this lower sugar content, you could just mix whiskey and Black Cherry White Claw. So, you know. I suppose. It would not have the pretty red color, and it gave me a little what, bit of a headache. What did you say? Nettie Lightning? Lightning Nettie. Lightning Dickerson. Light, Lightning Dickerson. <laughs> that sounds like a NASCAR driver. Cherry Lightning. Lightning Nettie's Cherry Dickerson. <laughs> That's a little too close to Salty Bill's Limp Richard, I think. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe, we could, maybe we could introduce the two. Oh. <laughs> how do we run a dating service for ghosts? How do we make this happen? Oh. Cherry Netty. Did we say that one yet? It doesn't need the word cherry. That's just overkill. Red Lady of Huntingdon College is a ghost. Or, I mean, I guess we could just call it the Alice Ream. Red Ream! Red Ream! Red Ream! <laughs> What's the little boy inside your mouth say? <laughs> he says so many things. <laughs> How about a good Dickerson ream? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I think we've got a winner. Is that it? Dickerson ream? <laughs> Mama! <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. Bow, bow, bow. One of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that what we're rolling with? We're... <laughs> Reaming Dickerson. Reaming Dickerson. <laughs> it is a Valentine's Day episode. It is a ma- well. Then I, let's I, keep it romantic. It's a Reaming right. Dickerson. The Reaming Dickerson. It is. <laughs> Obviously, we're spelling Reaming R H E E M. That's right. Well, we gotta keep it classy. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we don't have friends that hang out with us anymore. This they blamed why, it on COVID, but. That's why we don't have many listeners. <laughs> It's probably true. I don't know. They rambled about some ghost, and then they played some EVPs that sounded like shit, and then they just started making dick jokes for the next 30 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Mel really likes our show, so... We have our fans. <laughs> That's who we're doing it for, the real fans. <laughs> so what do you want to do on this next episode? I, I mean, what about the Warrens? I guess we can do the Warrens. What do you want to do? You want to praise them, cut them down? I mean... <laughs> Reevaluate them. What do you want to do? The controversial figures. <laughs> this is true in, in my heart of heart. Like, I don't believe in uh, doubting Lorraine Warren. However, I kind of think Ed's a creep, so... <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll get into that. We'll, uh, I don't know. 
we look into some of their cases and run over those and kind of talk about them. I mean, it works for me. We can do a, a drink inspired by, like, Amityville or Lorraine's Buffant hairdos. We'll figure something out. Ooh, a Buffant cocktail. Anyway, uh, check out our show notes. We'll have links to the Reaming Dickerson and uh, some stuff about Moran Manor and Alice Ream there. Of course, you can listen to our show, like, subscribe, and review us on Apple, Google, Spotify, a litany of other podcast hosts that we never mention. Radio Public, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Anchor, which is kind of Spotify already, so... Our website is boozeandspirits.com. We have a Patreon. Ooh, I, we have a YouTube. Sorry, what? We uh, we officially have a username for Facebook now. They oh, finally let me have one. Yeah, so it's Booze and Spirits. So face, Facebook.com yes. booze. Slash Booze and Spirits. Slash Booze and Spirits. Okay. I'll have to let change. me verify that. I'll have to change my links because by the time you hear this, the links will be fixed. But right now, my links on the website are not accurate. <laughs> oh, and we're on Twitter now because... Oh, the cool kids are doing it? On a personal note, I kind of feel that Twitter is basically just for morons and people trying to sell things to morons, but that's kind of the way social media is, so... <laughs> but you know what? We're willing to sell things to morons. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, morons. We'll sell things to morons, and, and you know what? Most of our best friends are morons, so... <laughs> yes, it is at facebook.com slash booze and spirit. All one word, no gappies. No gappies. All right. Gappies, no gappies. <laughs> and, of course, um, Instagram is where we do most of our... Nonsense. Social... That's, that's, it's the the focus of our social media, at Booze and Spirits Podcast. Uh, Twitter is Booze Spirits Pod, because apparently Katie had already established a handle, and I wasn't aware of it, so I came in and established another one. <laughs> I mean, that was just Booze Spirits, I think. Well... Nothing's there, so let's not go to that. We'll go to Boo Spirits Pod. <laughs> and remember to drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't end up our next ghost! Space ghost! <laughs> 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 if you uh, were a subscriber and you just hit unsubscribed, uh, we we're understand. not happy about it, but we understand. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd probably better go now before we do any more damage <laughs> bye everyone hey love you bye bye <laughs> oh, I know right